So, what is sustainable development? Well, one hint, it is not environmental policy. Sustainable development is about a planned central economy and redistribution of wealth on a local, state, national, and international level. The process by which it is implemented creates a matrix of locked away land as more severe land use controls, control of energy and energy production, control of transportation, control of industry, control of food production, control of development, control of water and its availability, and control of population size and growth. But of course, most of these policies and regulations are issued under the excuse of environmental protection. Agenda 21 is not just policy, it is a complete system to change the way we think, the way we react, the way we make decisions, and those who promote it have a very specific answer for how you are to do each of those things. That's why they call it an agenda. Let me show you what I mean. The logo for sustainable development that's used in all of their literature contains three connecting circles. Each one is labeled. One is labeled social equity, one is labeled economic prosperity, and one is labeled ecological integrity. These three things encompass every aspect of human life. Let me take them one at a time. Now, let me take social equity first. I'll tell you straight out. If you fail to grasp the social equity aspect of sustainable development, if you continue to think this is about conservation and environmental protection and just a common sense way to do development in our community, then you simply have no grasp of this issue, period. Social equity is based on a demand for social justice. This is a term that we now hear over and over again in public meetings, even in courtrooms. Social justice. Social equity and social justice require that the world's wealth be shared between those who produce and those who don't. It is every welfare program and wealth redistribution scheme ever proposed. Redistribution of wealth, by the way, means everyone is equally poor, not equally rich. It means no one can move forward unless everyone can move forward together. A utopian myth that cannot be achieved through government edicts. And by the way, Karl Marx was the first to coin the phrase social justice. Do I need to say any more? Barack Obama, in his recent State of the Union message back in January, the entire speech was based on social justice. When he called for economic fairness, he really meant redistribution of wealth, disdainfully attacking tax cuts for the wealthy. That's you, by the way. The sustainable system is based on the principle that individuals must give up selfish wants for the needs of the common good or the community. Whenever you hear them talking about the community, that's what they mean, the common good. The common good, there's no room for individuals. According to the sustainables, it is a social injustice for some to have prosperity if others do not. Profits, they say, are made at the expense of people. In short, Social equity and through sustainable development is a means to a forced utopia with promises of health care for all, jobs for all, housing for all, and equality for all. It's a goombaya hug. Agenda 21 means the individual is subservient to the needs of the greater good of society, and that's what they mean every time, as I said, every time local legislators talk about the community. The second E economic prosperity. At the root of Agenda 21, uh, economics, are public-private partnerships. Keep that term in your mind. Public-private partnerships. They pull together into a government-driven economy called corporatism. It is not capitalism or free markets, though it may have some of the trappings. The marketplace is still there, but ultimately, corporatism does not trust the marketplace to do what the elites want done. The partnerships allow for special tax breaks, access to land for some developers, but not for others. 
non-compete clauses in government projects and that guarantee profits, access to grants and lucrative special government projects, and much more. Under public-private partnerships, there is a guarantee of protection and what they call profits. The Texas Trans-Texas Corridor was a public-private partnership full of non-compete clauses and guarantees of profits. Corporations that play ball get the power of government, and government gets to hide behind the independence of, of private business. Thus, the partnerships between corporations and government is done at the expense of ordinary people, the exact opposite effect of free markets controlled by consumers. There's a new business, a new way that business is being run in America <laughs> under sustainable development. The business plan of the day, lobby for regulations. They argue that it's good for the economy, creating jobs by destroying things from the past. They say it's good for the economy uh, to enforce regulations, to make people buy things they didn't need before. Well, it's certainly not free enterprise or open markets. The true description is government-sanctioned monopolies right out of the Mussolini fascist playbook. And the third E, ecological integrity. Well, that's just the excuse for all of it, isn't it? Sustainable policy interprets any action man takes as a direct threat to the environment. Sustainables contend that humans only defile nature. And only a strong, central, all-powerful government can protect the environment. Individuals and limited government can't be trusted because man is nothing more than a swarm of locusts that swoops down on nature and sucks it dry till there's nothing left. Nothing good comes from man according to sustainableist doctrine. And private property ownership and control is a main target of sustainable development. Consider this quote from the report of the 1976 UN Habitat I conference, one of the precursors to the UN uh, Earth Summit in 92. In, the, uh, in this document, it said this about land. Quote, land cannot be treated as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals and subject to the pressures and inefficiencies of the market. Private land ownership is also a principal instrument of accumulation and concentration of wealth and therefore contributes to social justice. So when you gain equity on your home, you are contributing to social injustice because you're getting some wealth from that. What a horrible concept and we've got to stop it. The fact is, Agenda 21 is a blueprint to completely change our society to a top-down, planned central economy in a strange mixture of socialism, fascism, and corporatism. To convince Americans to accept it required something that would get us to sacrifice our natural rights voluntarily. The answer? Environmental Armageddon. You must sacrifice freedom to protect the planet. It's urgent, we're told. Consider this quote by Alexander King in the Club of Rome. He said, quote, In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine and the like, would fit the bill. All of these dangers are caused by human intervention. The real enemy, then, is humanity." End quote. So, the urgency is on. Global warming is feeding the hysteria. There's no time to consider things like individual concerns and wants and needs. Selfish cries of sustainableness. We must save the environment. Go green. Get out of your cars. Stop using energy. Sacrifice. Cut your carbon footprint or perish. And so, federal and state governments, working hand in hand with a horde of non-government organizations, private groups with personal political agendas, force passage of rules and regulations passed down to local communities. But, say your local officials, none of that UN socialist stuff is true. Just conspiracy theories with the right-wing radicals. We're just treating the uh, just creating the tools necessary in a local effort to manage growth and development for our community, they say. Have you heard these denials? 
Then consider this quote by J. Gary Lawrence, a planner for the city of Seattle and an advisor to the President's Council on Sustainable Development. He said, quote, participating in a UN-advocated planning process would very likely bring out many who would actively work to defeat any elected official undertaking Local Agenda 21. So, we will call our process something else, such as comprehensive planning, growth management, or smart growth, end quote. Local indeed. The fact is, this is a political movement led by those who seek to control the world economy, dictate development, and redistribute the world's wealth. They use the philosophical base of Karl Marx, the tactics of Adolf Hitler, and the rhetoric of the Sierra Club. Everything connected with sustainable development translates to higher costs, shortages, and sacrifice. The best way to understand what sustainable development actually is, is found by discovering what they consider to be not sustainable. Maurice Strong, the Secretary General of the Earth Summit in 1992, said, quote, current lifestyles and consumption patterns of the affluent middle class, you again, involving high meat intake, use of fossil fuels, appliances, home and work air conditioning, and suburban housing are not sustainable. You get that? That means your home, your private home on private property is not sustainable. Your barbecue out in the backyard is not sustainable. Getting cool in the summertime or warm in the wintertime is not sustainable. So, how is this wrenching transformation being put into place? There are four very specific routes being used. In the rural areas, it's called the Wildlands Project. In the cities, it's called smart growth. In business, it's called public-private partnerships. And in government, it's called stakeholder councils and non-elected boards and regional governments or reinvented government. Let me take them one at a time. First, the Wildlands Project was the brainchild of Earth First Dave Foreman, one of the most radical environmental groups ever to show its head in the public world. And it literally calls for the rewilding of 50% of all the land in every state back to the way it was before Christopher Columbus came here. In 1983, when Foreman first dreamed up the scheme for the Wildlands Project, he said this, quote, it is not enough to preserve the roadless, undeveloped country remaining. We must recreate wilderness in large regions, move out the cars and civilized people, dismantle the roads and the dams, reclaim the plowed lands and clear cuts, and reintroduce extirpated species. That's basically the headlines on every single newspaper in this country every day. They're tearing down the, the dams, they're tearing up the roads, they're not building new roads, and they're not allowing development in places across the country. Destruction of human civilization was his goal. In reality, the Wildlands Project is a diabolical plan to herd people off the rural lands and into, the human, into human settlements or our cities and our towns. From the demented mind of Dave Foreman, the plan became a blueprint for the UN's Biodiversity Treaty. So now the scheme is international in scope with the power of law. Thomas Lovejoy, a science advisor to the Federal Department of Interior, said this, quote, we will map the whole nation, determine development for the whole country, and regulate it. Land of the brave and home of the free. 